Hello everyone, it's Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be exploring a couple of different techniques to use when you're using a dark background. We're going to start off by taking a look at some of the products that we'll be using today. So for the techniques that I'm going to be sharing, I'm going to be using some black cardstock. This is pitch black cardstock from Hero Arts and then a piece of navy blue cardstock that I just had in my stash. We're going to be using a couple of my favorite sets from Pink Fresh Studio. This is the large butterfly set that came uh, out uh, several years ago. And you can see here I have the hot foil, the die, the stamp, as well as the coordinating stencils for this set. We're going to be getting a little bit inky. And for dark backgrounds, I recommend using Distress Oxide inks. So we're going to bring in some squeezed lemonade, some salty ocean, some Blueprint Sketch, and some Uncharted Mariner, which is one of the latest colors to be added to the Distress Ink line. Then, of course, you're going to need some sort of applicator to apply your Distress Oxide inks, and I'm going to be using the domed foam applicators with the wooden handles. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first technique that we're going to be using is what I'm calling a highlight. So we're going to be using our Distress Oxides to provide a highlight images that we're going to be adding to our um, card here. So the highlight is going to give our images a little bit of lift and kind of lift them out of that dark background and um, provide a little bit more of contrast. So when you're using a highlight, you want to use um, a color that's going to coordinate with your images. So I already know that my images will be um, yellow and turquoise. So I chose Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide Ink to be my highlight color. You can see there it kind of gives a little bit of a, um, a misty cloudy kind of look. And then as the ink continues to dry, it, it fades back a little bit and then it really gives a cloudy effect. So off camera, I went ahead and hot foiled a couple of uh, the large butterflies, as well as inked up one of the uh, one of the images, the side butterfly. Now I'm trying to figure out my um, layout so I can figure out how I want to attach these um, butterflies to my card panel, and I'm going to uh, uh, bent the wings up a little bit because I want to give those wings a little bit of dimension. Having that highlight behind wings that have been popped up just gives your card, uh, your final product, even more uh, depth and dimension uh, because you get a little bit of a shadow and then that highlight plays off of the shadow from the lifted wings. So I'm just attaching um, my butterflies to my card base using a little bit of liquid glue. Then I'm going to place an acrylic block on top of the um, the, the butterfly because there isn't a whole lot of the butterfly that's actually attached and touching um, the card panel. So I, because of that, I want to make sure that it's attached and uh, really, really well and securely. So I'm attaching this larger, um, fully foiled um, butterfly, and I'm just going to overlap the two butterflies just the tiniest bit. These butterflies are very large. I believe this set came out about two or three years ago uh, from Pink Fresh Studio, but it is one of my absolute favorite sets um, that I have in my stash of, of everything that I own. Um, I reach for this set time and time again, and if you were to add it to your collection, you would not be disappointed. So I've put a couple of foam dots behind the uh, wings of my butterflies. And now I'm going to just attach my card panel to my white card base. My card base is made out of Accent Opaque 120 pound cardstock. This is a great weight cardstock to use for card bases. It's nice and sturdy and will hold up to whatever amount of um, things you add to it. Now those of you have, that have been following me for a while know that I love to keep a stash of hot foil sentiments on hand for card making. And so I've dug into my little stash there and I found a hello sentiment that I hot foiled in black foil. So it's going to coordinate very nicely with my card. And once I've attached that sentiment to my card, this one is complete. It's time for us to move on to technique number two. 
So technique number two is all about adding a little bit of sparkle and shine to your dark background by using some heat embossing. So I've gone into my set of butterflies and I'm bringing out the stamps this time. I'm going to start by using my Rabbit Hole Designs Cottontail tool to add some powder to my surface of my cardstock. This is going to help prevent the um, embossing powder from sticking in places that I don't want it to stick. Then I'm going to place my butterfly stamp onto my card and kind of figure out exactly where I want my, uh, my butterfly to be because this is going to end up being a one layer card. And I close the door on my Misty, grab that stamp, and then we're going to use our um, Versamark ink to stamp our image. But before we do that, notice that this stamp has two images on it. I don't want that smaller side profile butterfly. So I'm just going to mark, uh, mask that off using a post-it note and a small piece of post-it tape. I'll go ahead and link as many of the products that I can in the description box below for easy access. So now that I've gotten that smaller butterfly kind of masked off, I'm going to bring in that Versamark water, um, embossing ink, which is a clear sticky ink. And that's what is going to catch and grab the embossing powder when I add that on later on. So I'm just going to get good coverage on my stamp. And using my Misty, I'm just going to close the door and I'm going to transfer that image onto my dark background. You can see there that that butterfly fits on that cardstock perfectly. So now I'm going to bring in that um, embossing powder and I'm using a silver embossing powder from Hero Arts. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over my cardstock generously because I want to make sure that I get good coverage and that I don't have any spaces uh, or places in this um, intricate design that are not covered by the, the embossing powder. Tap off the excess into a coffee filter, which will make for ease of transfer when you're funneling that powder back into your, um, into your jar. I do see a couple of spaces where some of that um, embossing powder wanted to stick in the places that I didn't want it to be. So I just bring in a paintbrush and brush that excess powder away. Using a clothespin to hold your, um, your item while you heat emboss is a great way to protect your fingers from that, that hot heat of the heat gun. I always like to have a little, uh, apply a little bit of heat to the back of my cardstock and kind of start melting the embossing powder from the back. And then I flip over to the front and finish and melting all of the embossing powder. This happens really quickly and you can see there that we end up with a beautiful stamped and embossed image on our dark cardstock. Let's take a look at what this image looks like close up. It's really pretty. That, that silver embossing powder from Hero Arts is really reflective and adds a lot of sparkle to the card. So the third technique that we're going to learn with using dark backgrounds is called a tone on tone inking. So you can see I'm going to take that same background that we created in technique two and we're just going to continue to add on to that image. You could stop with just the heat embossing and let that be your, um, your image. But I'm going to uh, take this a little bit further with some tone on tone inking. So I've brought out the stencils that coordinate with this large butterfly. And what I was showing you earlier is that there are six stencils in this set and they are numbered. So I'm going to start out with number one. I'm not going to use all of the stencils, um, but I'm going to start out with the first stencil and use it. So I'm going to take that one because it covers the largest part of the wings. And I'm going to um, use that to get a good first layer of ink down. Now I'm doing this on my glass mat from Glassboard Studio and I've decided to place some um, repositionable tape on the back of my cardstock so that it's held in place while I do my inking. This board is magnetic. Um, it's magnetic, it's large, it's, um, I love this thing. And I have a coupon code for you in the description box below if you want to grab one for yourself. So the, I'm going to do the upper wings in this salty ocean. And so I'm going to I'm bring in my, um, my foamed 
dome foam. That is hard to say, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to bring in my dome foam and just do a quick application of this Salty Ocean on the dark card, dark blue cardstock. And you can see there what a beautiful contrast that um, Salty Ocean adds. I loved it so much, I decided to go ahead and use it on the bottom wings as well. Um, but I'm also going to add some other colors, and you'll see what that, uh, how that looks in just a moment. So I've moved on to Blueprint Sketch to add a little bit of detail to the outer edges of the wings. And then for the middle set of wing, I'm going to use my darkest color, which is the Uncharted Mariner. And there you can see what, what the, using the tone on tone inking for uh, with a dark background, what beautiful image you can get and beautiful contrast um, as well, even though you're all still within the same uh, color family. Because I've uh, applied ink on top of my heat embossing, I'm going to bring in a, a microfiber towel and buff away the ink that is sitting on top of the ink and uh, the embossing rather. And so that's going to clean up my image. Let's take a closer look at these colors on top of this dark background. That I think that is absolutely stunning. And you can see all the different shades of blue and uh, they just work so well together. So I've gone back into my stash of um, heat embossed um, sentiments and I found one that was heat embossed in silver so that it'll match that silver embossing powder. And I chose the Sending Hugs uh, sentiment for that. I'm going to go ahead and add a, few, a little bit more of that um, tape runner to the back of my panel. And then I'm going to adhere the panel to my um, card base. The only dimension that is going to be on this card is from the sentiment. The rest of the card is just a one panel card, flat and, and beautiful. Um, I did go ahead and add some uh, white gouache uh, splatter to the card. I wanted to um, add a little bit more um, interest to the dark blue background. So I did do that off camera as well. So I'm just using, using some liquid glue to attach my sentiment. To the card and then using my tweezers I'm going to place the sentiment on the card panel you can use the tip of your tweezers to kind of straighten things out a little bit tweezers are very multifunctional and <laughs> great uh, tool to have in your stash and so with that we have come to the end of this video let's take a closer look at both of the cards that we created today using all three of the techniques for using and creating dark and moody black backgrounds. Let me know in the comments below if you like to use dark backgrounds for your cards. I hope this video has given you a couple of ideas and some inspiration on how you can use dark backgrounds for your creations. I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, please give this video a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscription button to join the Delta Crafter family. As I mentioned before, I'll have all of the products listed and linked below in the description box for you. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the Delta Crafter, as well as on my website, thedeltacrafter.com. Until next time, everyone, enjoy!